हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन स्वागत है आप सभी लोगों का आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू ग्रेड अप्स यूपीएससी यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज अमन जैन एंड टुडे विल बी गोइंग अक्रॉस करंट अफेयर्स थ्रू टर्म्स दिस इज आर पार्ट थ्री आई हैव ऑलरेडी रिकॉर्डेड टू This is our part three. I've already recorded two previous videos on this same topic. Hello, Dipali. Hello, Shikha. Hello, Poonam. So I hope all of you are well and are at home only, not moving out much. Hello, Pratap. Welcome to the session. so as you all know in current affairs through terms this has specifically been designed for students target audience is designed for students who are going to give the exams in a few months time right so students who will be appearing for let's say csc in a few months who will be appearing for epfo in a few months who might be appearing for pcs exams in a few months so this is dedicated to all those students right so this is being done designed specifically for students who are will be appearing in prelims in a few months not for students let me remind you not for students who are beginning their preparation because if you are beginners right now if you are beginning your preparation you will never have an idea of what is happening here right so this course this specific series which is current affairs through terms there's a playlist also on the channel this is specifically for students who are going to give up their prelims and not for students who are beginning their preparation because what i do in this session is whatever current affairs have come up whatever current affairs have come up in the past 10 months or something 10 months i summarize them through terms so i bring you a term and i elaborate that term so if you have no context of it if you have no context of what has happened in the past you will not be able to catch it up right and you can it, it will simply appear to you as if i'm reading out content right so my suggestion to you is that slowly and gradually if you are at beginners level you should simply go through the newspapers for now right and current affairs through terms is not meant for you current affairs through terms is meant for students who are aspirants who are who have covered current affairs of a substantial period let's say 6 months and they have a bit of contextual knowledge on it and thereby they will be able to move ahead through this part starting with the topic then you all of you are aware of government of india's advisory that you have to wash your hands using soap using soap for 40 to 45 seconds and you have to follow these 11 simple steps and you can get your hands crystal clean using this and you can stay away from the virus also in case you have any bit of query or doubt over novel coronavirus this is the number on which you can call up and there's a dedicated control room for this they will pick up your call they will answer your queries and thereby you can get your doubts or queries resolved by the expert themselves regarding our free sessions on youtube a lot of students they have put in requests asking sir what is the timing at what time do you conduct these sessions so let me summarize it all up for you so that you can avail the benefit of these sessions free sessions the first session comes up at 9:30 am in the morning and this is generally dedicated to pcs exams where we cover topics at a regional level at a state level so we might you might find topics to be covered for example for example if i may say let's say culture of rajasthan culture of rajasthan or let's say drainage of up or drainage of let's say west bengal so we might cover such articles here second session comes up at 1 o'clock 
second session comes up at 1 o'clock and the 1 o'clock session is entirely meant for your people who are giving UPSC EPFO and students who are giving other examination like PCS and other examinations like CSE but the medium uh, will always be in English of 1 o'clock session so the medium here is English medium will be English here at 1 o'clock where we'll pick up a topic or we'll go through question answers here or we'll go through current affairs through terms then at 3 30 our next session comes up this is meant for CSC students only students who are giving up UPSC CSC civil services examination and this is majorly bilingual so students can avail out the benefit of this session and then at 7 o'clock we dedicate this session to UPSC EPFO students only where we conduct the classes in bilingual medium so Hindi students can also come in and basically avail the benefit of the session other than this at 9 o'clock we have daily current affairs daily current affairs and on every Friday we conduct weekly current affairs session weekly current affairs session live for you so you can avail these avail these uh, you can look up at these free sessions and avail the benefit out of them for this week this was the schedule for the schedule for the classes that were held so on Mon on uh, 21st and 22nd Vasu sir had taken up the classes at 1 o'clock and he had discussed questions with you right today 23rd of April I will be covering your current affairs through terms part 3 tomorrow I will come back again at 1 o'clock and I will cover question answers with you so this is the schedule for the for this week current week that we are in okay let's start with the with the first term for the day then Bengal Florican Bengal Florican now Bengal Florican this has been included in the appendix 1 of UN Convention on Migratory Species at the 13th Conference of Parties 13th Conference of Parties to the Convention on Migratory Species CMS which is to be which was held in Gandhinagar Gujarat now this is the image of Bengal Florican and the bird has been listed down in critically endangered on the IUCN red list and is on schedule one of the Wildlife Protection Act of India 1972 and appendix one of sites now regarding this bird the region in which you may find it is in Indian subcontinent mainly in India and Tarai region of Nepal in India you may find it in the states of Uttar Pradesh Assam and Arunachal Pradesh Uttar Pradesh Assam and Arunachal Pradesh so Bengal Farrakhan has been included in the appendix one of UN convention on migratory species already there in with respect to trade there is regulation with respect to shooting or with respect to let's say it enjoys certain bit of protection under schedule one also of the wildlife protection act and it is found in the following regions so three aspects three basic facts important for the exam second is second term is yellow rust yellow rust is found in the sub mountainous parts of Punjab and Haryana and this was in news because farmers in Punjab and Haryana they were a bit worried because this fungal disease this fungal disease can result into lower production can result into lower production reason simply being reason simply being that this inhibits the photosynthesis activity this inhibits the photosynthesis activity right so as photosynthesis activity reduces down this may pose a challenge for farmers who are growing wheat in the region wheat in the region so it is sub mountainous parts of Punjab and Haryana yellow rust disease has been detected in the wheat crop which raised concern among the farmers now yellow rust is a fungal disease as I've already told you and it turns the leaves of the crop into yellowish color which decreases the photosynthesis activity and this eventually could result in the drop in the wheat, wheat crop production now this is a disease of cool weather disease of cool weather in the northern hills and northwestern plains zone northwestern plains zone next term third term is Indian Ocean Commission Indian Ocean Commission now India has been accepted as the observer of Indian Ocean Commission IOC 
and it is an intergovernmental organization which was created in the year 18 1982 1982 it was institutionalized in 1984 by victoria agreement in Seychelles island and the ioc is composed of five african indian ocean nations five indian ocean nations what are these these are Seychelles, Mauritius, Reunion Island, Madagascar and Comoros Island. Comoros Island. So IOC is composed of five African Indian Ocean nations, Comoros, Madagascar, Mauritius and Reunion, which is overseas region of France and Seychelles. The commission has a secretariat which is located in Mauritius and is headed by a secretary general. Headed by a secretary general. Next term that we have is fishing cat. Fishing cat. Now, fishing cat is also has been found in Chilka Lake region, but fishing cat generally is found in the mangrove forest of Sundarbans. It is found in the Brahmaputra Valley, Himalayan Valley of Ganga. It is also found in Western Ghats. So, it has now been found in the Chilka Lake region. So, this may be asked. Some simple facts may be asked to you. So, the major grounds, the major areas where it is found is mangrove forest in Sundarbans foothills of the Himalayas along the Ganga and Brahmaputra valley and in the western Ghats. So three major regions. The fishing cat is listed in the endangered list on the IUCN red list and the convention on international trade in endangered species sites list places it in the appendix 2 appendix 2 and it is also included in schedule 1 of Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972 thereby protecting it from hunting thereby protecting it from hunting next term that we have is hubali ankola railway line project hubali ankola railway line project and hubali ankola railway line project was in news because karnataka's chief minister he gave a go ahead to the project go ahead he gave a he approved the project chilka lake is in orissa Dipali Chilka Lake is in Orissa. So, Ankola Railway Line project, despite opposition by several members of the State Board of Wildlife. Now, the proposed 164.44 km railway line passes through forests and specifically, for, for, uh, specifically crosses through Kali Tiger Reserve and Bedti Conservation Reserve. Now, Kali Tiger Reserve in itself is a very sensitive zone ecologically sensitive zone sensitive because it contains two protected areas two important protected areas namely dandeli wildlife sanctuary and anshi Nat national park anshi national park now if you want to look this up this will appear to you in this format this is the railway line that has been proposed between hubali and ankola and this is the region of kali tiger reserve we already have a railway line from margao to hubali hubali Castle Rock Margao line and in order to basically overcome this a new railway line is to be built a new railway line is to be built to cut down the distance now the problem is that it passes through Kali Tiger Reserve right and Kali Tiger Reserve is an ecological zone so this was in news this may be asked in the form of facts to you simply facts to you next term that we have is Sukhna Lake so Punjab and Haryana High Court has declared Sukhna, Chandi, Sukhna Lake in Chandigarh as a living entity recently. Now in the past, rivers have been declared as living entity. The very first example of this is of river Ganga, which flows, which originates in the Uttarakhand state and basically goes on to state of UP also. So Nenital High Court of Uttarakhand gave the river Ganga living entity status using parents patriae jurisdiction earlier also. So in this case also the Chandigarh High Court has invoked parents patriae jurisdiction to declare the lake as legal entity for its survival, preservation and conservation. Parents patriae means for all legal purposes it is the parent. It is parent. And in the parent category, it has also kept all the citizens of the Union Territory of Chandigarh and they are hereby declaring it as loco parentis. They are the local guardians to save the lake from extinction. 
Now regarding Sukhna Lake, Sukhna Lake is a rain-fed lake located within Chandigarh region and it is its catchment area falls both into Punjab and Haryana. So rain received by Punjab and Haryana contributes to the Sukhna Lake. Next term that we have in news is Gersand. Gersand again a location. Now Gersand was in news because the state of Uttarakhand is supposed to change its capital capital from Dehradun to Gersand. Dehradun to Gersand. So Gersand will be made the new capital of state of UK. State of UK. So Uttarakhand government has approved that the new summer capital will be Gersand. Whereas the winter capital will still, to, will still remain to be Dehradun only. And Dehradun has been the temporary capital of the state since it's attained statehood in the year 2000. Now over the time, the issue with respect to Uttarakhand, now I come from Uttarakhand state only, so I can bit explain you a bit longer to, in this respect. Reason simply being that Uttarakhand contains a lot of population from the mountainous region, right? A lot of territory is mountainous, hilly region, comprising of two set of populations, Kumau and Garhwal, right? Now, over the period of time, both these regions have said that Dehradun lies in plains and thereby it doesn't portray a correct picture of the state. Thereby, there has been a demand that some mountainous location only should be declared as state of Uttarakhand only. And thereby, Gersand was picked up. Gersand was picked up and has remained in new since then. So, statehood activists, they have long contended that Gersand, a tehsil in the Chamoli district, should be the capital as it is best suited considering its mountainous terrain and also comparing majority part of the state is mountainous region only. So it lies between Kumau and Garhwal. So thereby, thereby considering these aspects, Gersan has been in news. Right? Okay. Next term that we have is Gender Social Norms Index. Again, an index and you know UPSC is quite fond of asking you questions on index. So, Gender Social Norms Index. So, recently UNDP has released it. So, you know the agency now. Remember it. Agency is UNDP. And index measures how social beliefs obstruct gender equality in areas like politics, work, education and contains data from 75 countries. Now, if you look at the formation of this index, composition of this index, what it does is it simply goes into different countries and asks the responders that do you think there is bias against the women? There is bias against the women. Kya koi pakshpaat hota hai aurton ke khilaf? Bias against the women. Or uske basis par they, they try and determine whether there is bias or not. Whether there is bias or not. So index basically measures whether social beliefs they try and obstruct gender equality in areas like politics, work, education and it contains data from 75 countries thereby covering 80% of the world's population. Now as per, as per the index, as, guys please, don't don't get into all of this right classes my classes currently are coming up on this platform only rana right so please focus on the content part please chal so gender bias worldwide jo hai uske basis par if you look at this index right majority of Majority of the population of the globe feels that there is bias against the women. There is bias against the women in at least one domain. In at least one domain. Be it political, be it economic, be it educational or be it physical integrity. So, majority of the world believes that there is bias against the women. Now, how many men globally believe? 98.7% of the men believe that there is at least one bias. And if you look at the women, 97% of the women believe that there is bias against the women. This means globally we are that there is a bias against the women. 
तो इंडेक्स क्लियर कर रहा है दैट देर इज डेफिनेटली बायस अगेंस्ट द वीमेन बायस अगेंस्ट द वीमेन नो नेक्स्ट टर्म दैट वी हैव इन न्यूज इज वेस्ट एशिया पीस प्लान वेस्ट एशिया पीस प्लान नो दिस इज अगेन क्वाइट डिबेटेबल टॉपिक राइट सो यूएस प्रेसिडेंट डोनाल्ड ट्रंप ही हैज रिवील्ड अ प्लान ऑफ टॉक्स ऑफ पीसफुल टॉक्स बिटवीन द स्टेट ऑफ पैलेस्टाइन and the state of israel now we know that both these states they have locked horns from the day israel was formed in the year 1948 right so both these states they have been at loggerheads they are fighting against each other and recently us president donald trump has unveiled a beautiful plan right in his words a beautiful plan so his plan is to revive the stalled two state talks between israelis and palestinians jo baatein ruk gayi hain stalled talks they should be revived back and this plan basically seeks to give israelis an expansive state with jerusalem as its undivided capital right so he's saying peace at one end and he proposes to give jerusalem to palestine right now there couldn't be a better oxymoron than this right so expansive state with jerusalem as its undivided capital and tight security control over future palestinian state this is his peaceful this is his definition of peace right so it proposes an independent palestinian state and recognition of israeli sovereignty over west bank settlements that were captured again in war that were again captured in war right again i'm not representing representing the palestinian viewpoint just even as a neutral person someone can clearly look up at look up at this and say that sir what you are bringing in is another point of disagreement between the two states which is again going to result out into a difficult situation for both these i mean uh, countries palestine and israel and thereby definitely they will again be fighting against each other for the next 100 years or something again right so west asia plan this west asia peace plan this was unveiled by president donald trump right okay the next term that i have is denotherium indicum Dino Therium Indicum. <clears throat> Now, by the image, it is quite clear to you that this is basically some species of elephant that were living on Earth. That were living on Earth, right? Now, you can carefully note down from its um, uh, teeth also, right? The uh, elephant teeth also. That these are not the teeth that we look up today. Currently, in situation, we don't find elephant teeth to be moving on, moving backwards, right? so recently the scientists who were carrying out excavation in the kutch region of gujarat they stumbled upon a premolar tooth so they stumble upon this tooth only and using this tooth they were able to derive out that this is belong this belonged to extinct ancient elephant ancient elephant called as dinotherium indicum dinotherium indicum now using the technique called as bio stratigraphy bio stratigraphy it was estimated that d indicum they lived roughly between 8, 11 and 7 million years ago in india so location jo hai at the present location at which the tooth was found considering that they were able to derive out that dinotherium indicum they were living in this territory right what we call as india today they were living in this territory 11 to 7 million years ago back right so they may ask you simple facts related to the species and they may ask you that this was recently in news what is it exactly or what is it related to and they may give you four options on this next term that i have is caressa copili caressa copili and this is a plant species which is found in assam plant species which is found in assam now copili is majorly a river river and this is a dis this is a tributary of brahmaputra tributary of Bra brahmaputra right so this is the largest south bank tributary of brahmaputra and thereby by the name kopili you can remember this by the name kopili you can remember this this is the name of a river river which is a tributary of brahmaputra and karesa which is the new plant species has been found in assam now this is basically found in the river bed river bed of kopili river river bed of kopili river thereby giving it the name karesa kopili 
giving it the name Karissa Kopili. So the technique to remember it is by the name of the river Kopili and in its river bed is found Karissa Kopili. So it is distributed sparsely, so at a few locations only along the river bed of Kopili river. Next term that we have is solar orbiter mission. Solar orbiter mission. Now this mission is basically a collaboration between ESA, European Space Agency and NASA. The first mission that will provide images of the sun's north and southern poles. North and south poles. It is a seven year mission and the mission will work in tandem with NASA's Parker Solar Probe which is currently orbiting the sun on a seven year mission. So this will provide us, solar orbiter mission will provide us with images of north and south pole of sun. Sir, madam plant here, it is simply a plant, simply a plant. Again, they will never ask you what is it, whether it is a plant, whether it is fruit, whether it is vegetable, right? See, again, I'm repeating it out again. Curiosity is something that you will have to inhibit when you are looking over at terms because curiosity can be very dangerous here, right? There is absolutely no point to get into details. You simply have to cover it up from exam point of view. And these are simple facts that you may have to remember that you may have to recall in the exam. Now they will never ask you that Karissa Kopili is a, is a, is a, was recently seen in news. Tell us whether it is plant, whether it is uh, fruit or whether it is vegetable, right? They will simply say it is a new plant species found in Karnataka. So you have to, you have to cancel it out because it is found in Assam. I hope Dipali, now it is more clear to you, right? Okay, so solar orbiter mission, I have provided the image also. So this is launched by ESA, European Space Agency in collaboration with NASA. These two, solar, these two agencies, they are collaborating on this mission. What is the aim? The aim is to find out the images of South and North Pole of the Sun. Of the Sun. Right? Okay. Next term that I have is Mini Moon. Now, again, quite special now. Because in February, in the month of February, an asteroid almost the size of a car, size of a car, it basically entered, entered into the orbit of the earth, right? So it started revolving around the earth and it almost appears like a second moon. Yamara moon to hai, second moon, not that big, right? Comparison to earth, I've drawn it a bit bigger. So this appears like a second moon if you watch it using a telescope. So mini moon is an asteroid which has set, entered into an orbit around the earth which is acting like a second moon. The asteroid is called 2020 CD3 and has a diameter of about 1.9 meter to 3.5 almost the size of a car and was discovered in the month of February. Mini moon is temporarily captured object and in a few years in a few years, this will simply move out of the orbit. So it is TCO temporarily captured object and this will escape the Earth's orbit in a few years. Its orbit is still unstable and it has to contend with the gravitational force of sun and the permanent moon that we have. Right? This is the image of mini moon, mini moon and this is our natural moon. This is the moon that we see every night. This is the mini moon, asteroid, almost the size of a car. Next is Chaitra Jatra festival. Chaitra Jatra, this is celebrated at Tara Tarini Hill Shrine in the Hindu month of Chaitra. And the shrine is in Odisha. So Tara Tarini Hill Shrine is located at Kumari Hill. Kumari Hill location is again important on banks of Rushi Kulya River and major center of Shakti worship. Shakti Peet Hapin Sunaunga, Shakti worship in Odisha. Now this famous annual Chaitra Jatra festival, Chaitra Mahina Jatra festival is scheduled to be held on March 17, but because of the COVID-19, it has been canceled now. It has been canceled now. Now we know that at times, articles related to festivals are a bit important for us. Sorry, articles related to festivals are a bit important for us because we have seen 
questions related to art and culture or a bit of specific shrine or deity is at times asked to us right so again facts are important in this related to the festival now this is the image of the festival from last year next we have is red panda red panda now, red panda is in news why because wildlife trading monitoring network traffic traffic has found that red pandas are falling into the traps laid for other animals like deer and wild pigs now, as per iucn status the species is endangered and as per sites it is in appendix 1 schedule 1 of the indian wildlife protection act status kya hai iucn ke according iucn it is endangered as per sites it is in appendix 1 appendix 1 and as per wpa wildlife protection act of 1972 it is in schedule 1 schedule 1 so almost highest level of protection is guaranteed to the animal red panda now it is found in the forests of india nepal bhutan and the northern mountains of myanmar and southern china and southern china so back in 2000s red panda species they started to decline very rapidly and it remained in news and upsc did ask a question on red panda in that time period now this is again in news because because red pandas they are falling into the traps that are being laid for other animals next term that i have is world happiness report 2020 so the recent findings are us are there with us first look at the agency let's look at the agency that releases it so sustainable development solutions network for united nations by the un general assembly is the agency which releases this report the survey of the state of global happiness is considered so it no longer no not only considers just gdp but also co considers other parameters other parameters and measures the amount of happiness living in that particular region right now finland is on the world's happiest it is on the number one rank and thereby is the world's happiest nation. India, unfortunately, we are at 144th place. 144th place. Now, parameters that you may ask, what are these other parameters that are considered? This is the list of rankings. This is the list of rankings. Absolutely, Devika. Bhutan was the first country which started to measure, not its GDP, but started to measure Something called as happiness or uh, gross gross happiness index. So it, it started to measure gross happiness index for different regions in its country, right? And thereby this idea developed. It was picked up by UN agency, and thereby the idea developed at a global level. So definitely, it is linked Devika to. Bhutan only because Bhutan was the first country to give this up. Also, our, our, uh, in our own country, MP was the first state. MP, Madhya Pradesh was the first state which tried to do the same. It tried to measure the state gross happiness index. State gross happiness index. MP was the first state. Now, if you look at the parameters very carefully, GDP is one of them. Other than GDP, GDP, yeah. GDP is all blue, right? Other than GDP, they also consider in this index social support. They consider health life expectancy. They consider freedom to make choices. Consider generosity. They consider perception of corruption. Consider dystopia. And they consider confidence interval in the population. And using all these parameters, using all these parameters, they try and measure the happiness of the people, happiness of the residents. And as we can see, Nordic countries are on the top. Finland, Denmark, Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, Netherlands, Nordic countries are on the top. And India is unfortunately on the 144th position. Although we may seem happy, right? But we are yet, we have to cover a lot of ground in terms of these parameters. Right? Okay. Next term that we have is Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Grand Eth Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, G-E-R-D. Now, why is this in news? Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, this is in news because the two countries, Egypt and Ethiopia, they are basically locking horns. They are fighting against each other. 
they are against each other against this dam which is to be built on the river nile which is to be built on the river nile so gird it is a 5 billion project that will be the largest hydroelectric dam in africa and the dam is located on ethiopia's flank of the blue nile just 12 miles from its border from sudan so if you look at the location this is grand ethiopian renaissance dam grand ethiopian renaissance dam and the state of ethiopia ethiopia and egypt egypt is here so they are fighting both of them are fighting with each other over this right okay now why is why are they fighting i think i you can predict it out because egypt's water supply will be affected by this egypt's water supply will be affected by this sir gerd oh sorry anju gerd madam is grand ethiopian renaissance dam grand ethiopian renaissance dam this is the highest largest hydroelectric dam in all of africa largest hydroelectric dam in all of africa it is to be built so 5 billion project hai currently 5 billion dollars project okay so the next term that i have is gsat 1 gsat 1 so india space research organization isro is preparing to launch gsat 1 a new earth observation satellite a new earth observation satellite so it will remain pinpointed over location of india location of india and it will tell us it will communicate to us if there is any change in the borders if there is any change in the borders if there is any change in the climatic conditions climatic conditions if there is any change in the ocean so it will tell us about the disasters that may come due to change in borders for example if there is infiltration if there is change in climatic conditions if there is change in for example tsunami waves are rising or there is a condition of tsunami coming in so gsat 1 will communicate it will remain pin pointed over the location of india so it will have high resolution cameras which will help to monitor any changes in our borders and the overall geographical condition of the country so it will provide real time pictures of large areas of the country under cloud free conditions at all frequent intervals at all frequent intervals and using these images only we can compare so for example it clicks a image currently it will compare it with the previous images that it has in its database and if it notices any changes if it notices any changes in the geographical boundary it will relay it down it will communicate at the ground level station this is isro gslv mark 2 rocket which will is going to carry which is going to carry the satellite gsat 1 gsat 1 i hope the art, this is again clear to you now next term that i have is amrabad tiger reserve amrabad tiger reserve so amrabad tiger reserve it lies in nalamalla hills of telangana nalamalla hills of telangana and this is the second largest tiger reserve of india second largest tiger reserve of india next only to nagarjuna sagar sri sailam tiger reserve nagarjuna sagar sri sailam tiger reserve which is an andhra pradesh and telangana collectively now this tiger reserve amrabad tiger reserve has a large presence of chenchu tribe chenchu tribe again very important and it harbors great biodiversity consisting of around 70 species of mammals 300 bird species 60 species of reptiles and thousands of insects and all supported and nourished by more than 600 different species of plants 600 species different species of plants okay so this was the last term for the day then thank you very much i will like to tell you about this course that we are bringing in so grade up classroom brings to you aim upsc epfo 2020 which is a four month master course in english the classes will be held in english content will be in english and this is our batch 2 of aim now in this course you get 175 plus live classes and pdfs to cover the complete syllabus and using these pdfs you ex vasu sir will be taking history and polity in the course 
and sir has 3 plus years of teaching experience in history and polity and has mentored more than 10000 students sir has cleared cds and capf and sir has appeared for interview interview in the year 2017 csc interview 2017 so sir has quite a brilliant record with upsc right tej pradap singh sir will be taking care of accounting accounting and sir has served as assistant audit officer in cag securing an all india rank of 55 and has mentored more than 2 lakh plus students surajit bhaduri sir will be taking care of labor laws and social security and sir has 8 plus years of teaching experience law and sir is a graduate from national law university gandhinagar topmost university in india and more than 5000 students they have started their upsc epfo preparation journey with us you can start the free trial by clicking on the description that is given to you in this uh, uh, description of the video if you have like if you have found the session to be useful please do like the session and share it with your friends who are preparing for different competitive exam friends and family our attempt here at grade up is to provide you content content in a seamless delivery in a seamless manner so that it becomes easier for you to understand and grasp terms for you to grasp different set of information so that you may clear out the exam so all the best from our side and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you keep receiving notifications of all these free sessions that we are conducting for you with these words i'll rest my case then thank you very much don't forget to like it don't forget to share the session i'll see you guys tomorrow then on youtube at 1 o'clock take care and keep studying